Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal are one of the best duos ever, but in 2005, Shaq was traded to Miami. He was joining an athletic Dwayne Wade, and Kobe was left all alone in Los Angeles until today. Because now Kobe is headed to Miami instead of Shaq as we rewrite history, and the Black Mamba lives out the career path Shaq took post-Los Angeles. This was perfect timing for the Miami Heat because Kobe was just entering his prime. Fresh off of three championships, he still felt like he had a lot left to prove without playing alongside one of the greatest centers of all time. Now he was joined with another great center, but Morning was at the back end of his career and wasn't exactly a star anymore, but Wade definitely was emerging as a star in this league. He was only 23 years old, but his performance would lead you to think he was a 10-year veteran in this league. This was an incredible pairing alongside Kobe, who was flourishing in the new offensive scheme. Wade was capable of creating for himself with the ball, and that threat alone gave Brian more opportunities to score the ball. In his debut season with Miami, Kobe was continuing the play he became known for in LA, and he had clearly formed one of the scariest backcourts the NBA has ever seen. But were the Heat really ready for that next step? Their bench was incredibly underwhelming. Kobe's co-star had just been drafted a year ago, and Alonzo Mourning was old as fuck. Could Kobe get things done here in Miami and get them to the playoffs or were the haters right that he needed Shaq? The answer was obvious with the level of play seen from Kobe all year. He was instantly changing the trajectory of the Heat organization and catapulting them to 16 more wins than the season prior, but the playoffs would have a major test. And in round one, Kobe and the Heat are playing the Pistons who defeated Kobe and Shaq the year prior, so now we can see, can Kobe and Wade defeat the Pistons? Instantly in this series, Kobe was playing with a clear vendetta to get revenge on a team who bounced him a year ago. Out the gates of game one, he was aggressive and leaving the charge for his team on offense, but also defensively, he was making a major impact for his group. This style of play was proving worthwhile because the Heat would be going up 1-0 in this series. But unsurprisingly, this series wasn't going to continue to be that easy for the Miami Heat. The Detroit Pistons were rallying back in the next game with their gritty style of play, and led by an impressive 39-point outburst by Richard Hamilton, they'd be tying things all back up. And with things transitioning to Detroit for the next two games, there was a lot at stake for Kobe, and a lot was riding on his performance. But when the lights would have Brightest as Kobe was prepared. He was not faced by the enemy crowd and was in Detroit playing like it was his own backyard. Point after point and shot after shot, Kobe was outclassed in Detroit's defense in route to a strong 3-1 series lead. Detroit would go on to win game five on the road in Miami, but Kobe instantly halted any hopes they had of getting back into the series and was leaving Detroit in game six to advance to the second round. There, Kobe was facing Kidd in the Nets, who had upset LeBron James in round one. While the duel of Kidd and Carter was entertaining, they weren't as good as Detroit. Kobe Bryant was on an absolute rampage in this series it may as well have already been over before it even started because the offensive onslaught he was unleashing left new jersey with no game plan there was just no stopping kobe he was going to do whatever it took to get into the conference final as he swept the nets in four and now he would find himself in a duel with paul pierce for a trip to the nba finals these two offensive juggernauts would be completely going after one another they were two of the best offensive players in the league currently and each shared the characteristic of being tough hardcore competitors neither one was letting up in the one once in air and they appeared to be nearly equally matched but the heat had a secret weapon the second year wade was already an all-star in the nba and this series would be where he completely break out and put his name on the map in the biggest way possible while pierce and kobe were deadlocked in their duel wade was quietly pushing Miami further than boston was able to keep up with while during most of the season kobe was a clear alpha with wade playing sidekick this series was different and by this point they appeared to be equals and this proved to be too much for boston unless down three to one they could pull out a miracle late boston is down three to one in this series down by two with 20 seconds remaining they have a final shot here for a chance to tie to take the lead paul pierce in the post the shimmy the fade it's no good davis with the rebound though the put back he ties it all up now with the game all tied kobe bryant has a chance to win this thing and get a trip to the nba finals when the dallas mavericks are waiting dueling with the ball no way he's taking it right Dwayne waits fouled out it's gonna be dueling not kobe this this is insane kobe calling around this swing to heading jones for three. Oh my god God, how is the ball not in the hands of Kobe? Who the fuck does dueling think he is? Luckily, though, for Miami, even without waiting in the overtime, Kobe had enough to get things done for his team. He forced Coach to bench dueling for the rest of the night, and from there, he was taken over to help the Heat get their first ever NBA Finals when Nowitzki and the Mavericks were waiting. As we all know, Dirk was a top five player in the NBA during the mid-2000s, and that wasn't changing in the Finals as he was attacking Miami's defense. Going into Game 1, most analysts had Dallas dominating at home and taking the win, but Kobe was determined to prove all of his doubters wrong, and in Game 1, would lead all players to scoring to get his team up 
one to zero. However, as far as Dirk was concerned, Kobe's play wasn't going to be enough. He was responding to Brian's game one performance with an even more incredible performance of his own in game two. That would be enough to get Dallas back in that series. And with things headed into Kobe's home field, Dirk was still on fire. It was shocking to see such efficient play consistently throughout this series. It seemed like missing was impossible for Dirk, which would be the Achilles heel for the Heat's incredible season. After winning both games on Miami, he wasn't going to let the tide of the series change back in his home court, and he was being crowned an NBA champion and the finals MVP. And Kobe was left disappointed in the failure of the season, but would have another promising opportunity in 2006. Miami wouldn't have any major changes to their roster, but their big change was Wade in year three. This was the season that Dwayne was making a massive leap and elevating his game to an MVP caliber level of play. Kobe was still the best player on the roster, but Wade was now good enough to question if this duo was actually a better duo than Kobe and Shaq together. Wade was without a doubt a true superstar, even only in his third season, and this would make a huge impact on the team's record as they would earn another playoff appearance. They played Detroit in the first round again, and this year wasn't as competitive as the year before. Kobe and Wade were nearly outscoring the Pistons' entire team just between the two of them, and this would be an easy five-game series. Following their win, they were facing AI in the Sixers, but it ended much like the last Kobe and AI matchup in the finals as Kobe was crushing Iverson's hopes and dreams. But now Kobe had a big challenge awaiting him in the conference finals. A young LeBron has won his first MVP already this season and is one round away from a trip to the NBA finals. Of course, he was coming into the series desperate to get to that next level and live up to the huge expectations that have been set onto him. Even with Kobe Bryant sticking him, he was still aggressive on offense and looking to score to carry this mediocre Cavaliers team. He may only be 21 years old, but he poised a legitimate threat to halt Kobe's chances of getting back to the finals. Bryant knew he couldn't let up versus the hungry young LeBron. It would rise to the occasion to step his game up drastically throughout this series. Not only would he get his team past Cleveland, but he was playing at a high enough level to have many questioning if he should have been the MVP over LeBron. But for Kobe, that was the least of his worries. What he really wanted was the feeling of winning it all again, but this time with Miami and without Shaq. But again in the finals, Dirk was waiting. Just last year, he was hoisting up the finals MVP while Kobe watched in disgust. So this year, something would have to change, and that would be in part D-Wade's responsibility. Wade was playing at a far higher level in this year's finals than he did in the matchup prior, and it was looking like that's all Kobe needed because they found themselves up 3-2 to two in this series. The game six wasn't going to come free though. Dirk was prepared to keep his team in contention for a repeat. He was scorching on offense and looked to be forcing a game seven, but Kobe had other plans. Kobe himself was also absolutely on a heater in game six from everywhere. Not only was he sick of his typical mid-range arsenal of shots, but he was swishing in three after three in an era where this type of shooting wasn't typical. He was finishing the game with nine threes made and enough excellence to reach his ultimate goal of winning another ring. The very next season, they found themselves back in the playoffs after Wade has kept developing and Kobe has continued to play at an unbelievable level. In the Easter Conference, they were flying through their competition every single round and that was in large part thanks to Kobe having the best season so far. Kobe officially gets his first MVP as a member of the Heat 50-40-90 club. He's going insane and he's ready for a chance to repeat versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. With as good of a player as Kevin Garnett was, unfortunately, Minnesota just wasn't that great of a team. Aside from KG, they lacked any other notable talent and it was clear they were dragged here off the determination of Garnett. This made things extremely easy for Kobe in his attempt at repeating with limited risk of losing. Not to take away from the impressive run that Minnesota put together in order to get to this point, but in every way, Miami was the better team. And by a long shot, that he had the best player in the series with Kobe and he'd be the one taking the team all the way in a sweep of Garnett as he was officially completing the repeat to put himself at five total championships. This win over Garnett will cause some changes soon that surely would impact Kobe's success. But for now, Bryant was celebrating the win and is now in the race to match Jordan's six championships. Except it would be on a new team as in 2008 that he moved on from Kobe and sent him to continue his career in Phoenix. Kobe joined Phoenix in the second half of the season, but would fit in right away. He was paired with the best point guard in the NBA who seamlessly got him incorporated into the flow of the team. Before Kobe ever arrived, Steve Nash already had this team set up as contenders. So with the addition of Kobe, they would become a clear favorites to win it all and head into the playoffs. Their record was showing it. 70-12 for the Suns. Kobe was added to a team that was already contending for a title. Steve Nash got MVP. He got like 16 assists per game. Pass it to Kobe. I got a feeling they're just going to completely run through the playoffs.
in the first round they were facing a Warriors team that wasn't even above 500 for the season this one would go much like you'd expect in the next round Kobe had a chance to shut down the team that portrayed him so many years ago this round was something personal for Kobe Nash may have been the NBA MVP for the season but in this series the only star player on the court was going to be Kobe it was a scoring masterclass of the ages with never before seen levels of efficiency he wanted this matchup more than anything and fans of basketball being for an absolute treat as Kobe was showcasing his absolute best series he's ever had with unbelievable stats and he was belting the Lakers out of the playoffs the conference finals would be much less climatic compared to the Hollywood-esque matchup versus the Lakers this round was against CP3 and the Hornets but the Phoenix Super Team was far too much for New Orleans to keep up with and the Suns would be practically walking straight to the finals Again, Kobe was facing the Celtics' big three in the finals. Immediately here in game one, that big three was on the attack. Pierce was aggressive, and Ray Allen was shooting the lights out of the building and draining Kobe's energy, chasing him around screens. The big man of the bunch, KG, was also a major threat on both ends with his aggressive play. He was eating on Mari alive down low in the paint, and I was starting to get worried. Here in game one, Kobe and the Suns are down by almost 20 points to the Celtics. I'm kind of worried that Boston is going to beat Kobe in 08 again, just like he did in real life when Kobe was on the lake. But boy, was I in the wrong to be doubting Kobe being Bryant. Boston man made the first strike, but the next several strikes would be going to Kobe. He picked up his game in the following matches, and in the face of adversity versus the highly impressive Celtics roster, he was proving just how dominant he was. This Suns team was certainly his best roster since his Lakers days, and maybe even better. And now that they're being put to the test here in the finals, they were showing the world just how incredible they were. Phoenix would turn the series all the way around with a reverse sweep over the course of the next four games, and it'd be three straight championships for Kobe Bryant. And in 2009, it was looking eerily similar to 2008 as Phoenix was again barely through all the competition in the playoffs. And again, Kobe is putting up some absolutely absurd averages all on the way to the finals versus Boston again. Except this time, Boston was fighting back after two years of chemistry building and were attempting to force a game seven late in game six. We are in this game six of the finals all tied up. Amari Stoudemire is dealing with some injuries this year. I think that's why it may have gone too sick but it's tied up with 30 seconds left. Tony Allen has the ball. They get it to KG. It's looking like they're going to KG to the clutch. I don't know why Kobe's on him. The hook, he misses. KG misses an easy one. Phoenix takes a timeout. I honestly cannot believe that Kevin Garnett missed that shot with the game on. That was easy. Kobe Bryant, the mismatch on him. 20 seconds left. I imagine Phoenix takes the last shot. Steve Nash has it. Nash or Kobe, I would not be mad but either of them taking this shot here. Steve with the ball, milking the clock. 12 seconds left. Kobe's just chilling in the corner with Steve here. Eight seconds left. It's looking like it's going to be Nash. Let's Kobe get the ball late. Steve Nash, he gets the screen. Nash, nowhere to go. Three seconds. What, what are they doing? He kicks it a grail for three. Oh, my God. The score is still relatively close here in OT. Phoenix up by two with 40 seconds left. That's the second time in this sim. Kobe has been neglected in the clutch, and a point guard has passed into a shitter. Kevin Garnett trying to make up regulation to step back. Nowhere to go. Rondo has the ball now at the top. Ray Allen with a screen. Is that an illegal screen? Yo, that's the second time we've seen this happen in this sim as well. The choking is getting out of hand. Phoenix now has an opportunity. Pretty much hit a dagger here. Kobe Bryant has it. Thank God he scores here. This one's pretty much over. Ray Allen on him. He's milking a little bit clock. 15 seconds up on the shot clock. Kobe sides the break. Driving in. He's bringing the double team. Kobe in the post. He kicks over the hill again in the clutch. Hill this time with a drive. His light is good. The four point lead with just under 18 seconds left. That might do it. Major props to Kobe for trusting his teammates there. Unless Boston get a quick three here. I think this one is all but over. Rondo has it. 15 seconds remaining. They have to go quick. Time is not on their side. Rondo trying to get away. Paul Pierce wide open. No. Oh, he gets it in the truth. They know Fallon Nash, him to free the line, one of the best free throw shooters ever. He nails both. It doesn't look like Boston has any time else left. 7.6, down by three. They need a three. I imagine it's got to be right. Oh, Kevin Garnett, no. It's Pierce in the corner. Bang! There is absolutely no way. Pierce just hit it. Oh, my God. 0.8 seconds left. Does Phoenix have enough time? Can Kobe Bryant make a miracle here? Diaz on the inbound. He's got a pass. He gets to the Kobe for three over Ray. Oh! And here at double overtime, it's tied again. The Simcast is here. I cannot believe this. It's looking like Phoenix has the ball. Can they just end this game? It's double OT. Kobe with it. 16 seconds left. Do not send to a triple overtime. They're bringing the double team on Kobe. Hill has the ball now. Kobe Brown wide over the left side. You got to get it to Kobe. It's looking like Hill's taking it. Amar Stoudemire with the pick and roll. Hill driving in. That pull up. Jay. Oh, this is insane. 
Boston with it now. I don't know how much more my heart can take it is. I just need an 18 to win. I don't care who at this point. It's in Ray Allen's hands over Kobe. Oh, a triple overtime. And finally, a triple overtime. It's looking like the Suns have a comfortable lead of four. Six seconds left. I mean, in regulation, it was crazy with Paul Pierce. Ray Allen, he's off. And Phoenix, finally, after 15 extra minutes of basketball, have won the NBA championship back to back with kobe bryant but kobe would be celebrating with his team in phoenix for the final time because the next year kobe would be joining cleveland to play with lebron and as i'm doing this sim i'm starting to realize Shaq really played with like some of the best players ever he played with penny hardaway kobe wade nash lebron james the celtics big three like yo he, he really had it made in real life this year, the Cavaliers had the best record in the entire NBA. So by no surprise, adding Kobe Bryant was going to guarantee that this was the best team. Kobe fit in perfectly alongside LeBron, who was a willing facilitator, and they finished the year with an impressive record. But in the conference finals, they'd be in a situation that nobody expected. They really just lost to the Orlando Magic. I mean, I, I had to go look. Everyone is healthy on the team. And the game seven wasn't even close. They, they lost by nine points. Wow, man. What a, what a failed experiment here with the Cavaliers. And in his final year, Kobe would do the unthinkable by joining the Boston Celtics. He was determined to get one more ring under his belt before calling it a career at the end of the season. He joined a Celtics team that were already staffed and considered a top team of all time. With Kobe joining, it wasn't even fair for the league at this point, and by no surprise, they had the best record of all time. Kobe on the Celtics isn't even fair. 78 and four, the only loss they took all year was the Bulls, Heat, the Sixers, and I don't know who the other team was, but I mean, four losses, come on, man. I can't imagine anyone stopping them here in the playoffs. The winning was continuing throughout the postseason too, as Boston was stampeding straight through every round of the Eastern Conference, including the big three Miami Heat in the Conference Finals, while on their way to the Finals, where they finished up the sweep of the playoffs by blowing the Oklahoma City Thunder straight out of the water to get Kobe yet another ring for five championships with Shaq's career path and a total of eight to establish himself as the undisputed GOAT. We just saw Kobe being traded instead of Shaq, but what if neither player was traded? Find out by clicking this video next.